Welcome to PDC Spotlight. I'm John Jackley, the Director of Communications and Business Equity at the Portland Development Commission. We're here today at the Olympic Mills Commerce Center, located in the heart of Portland's Central East Side Urban Renewal Area. We're going to be talking with Geraldine Moyle, a Senior Project Manager at the agency, about our economic redevelopment and job creation efforts in the Central East Side. We'll also be talking with Brad Malson, the owner of Beam Development, about the Burnside Bridgehead Project in particular. We've got a lot of really good stuff to share with you today. So let's get started. The Central East Side Urban Renewal Area is located on the east bank of the Willamette River in the heart of downtown Portland. Warehouse, distribution, and manufacturing uses are throughout the area, and there's retail as well along the major streets such as Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Grand, Burnside, Cooch, Morrison and Belmont, Hawthorne and Powell. The district is considered a key employment center for the central city, and urban renewal efforts are focused on creating and maintaining jobs in the area through business development and redevelopment financing. Strategies for future development in the district focus on the areas along the new East Burnside Cooch Couplet, the Burnside Bridgehead, and the Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard Grand Avenue Commercial Corridor. Strategies for future development include transportation improvements on the major roads, helping small businesses, improving storefronts, and bringing as many job opportunities as possible to the Central East Side. Here to tell us more about the Central East Side Urban Renewal Area is Geraldine Moyle, a Senior Project Manager at the Portland Development Commission. Geraldine, thanks for being on the show. Tell us a little bit about your background and your interests and how you came to work at PDC. Great. Well, I, I have a background in architecture and urban planning, and I spent about 12 years in the, in the private sector working mm -hmm. for Group McKenzie in architecture and engineering firm here oh, in town. And then I transferred over to PDC, where I have spent most of my time working in the urban development department on a variety of real estate, transportation, development projects in both North McAdam and the Central East Side Urban Renewal areas. I've been in Oregon for most of my life. My family moved here when I was seven, so, so I really do feel like I'm a local native Oregonian. So tell us a little bit about the Central East Side in particular. What are the goals here? What are the city, what are the people here? What does PDC want to see accomplished in the Central East Side? Well, the Central East Side Urban Renewal Area is about 404 acres in size, and it's in the Central City, so it's the, the east side of the river. And um, a lot of our focus is on job creation and job retention. There's actually 17,000 jobs in the Central East Side currently. And so a lot of our focus with the work that we do at PDC is, is how to retain those jobs, how to create those jobs, and how to make the Central East Side more viable for the existing jobs that are there um, in terms of the amenities they might need, the services, uh, how to mix it up with commercial and residential type uses as well because we, we do have a strong connection to the neighborhoods that are directly adjacent to the employment areas as well. We spend a lot of time working with both the Central East Side Industrial Council and the neighborhoods and with both the East Side Streetcar and the Burnside Cooch Couplet under construction right now, we're, we're pretty excited for what comes next. So speaking of neighborhoods and small business and public participation, we do have an extensive public process. How can people get involved in the future of the Central East Side Urban Renewal Area and the Burnside Bridgehead Project in particular? Well, there are lots of opportunities. With the Burnside Bridgehead site, which is about four acres of the Central East Side, we have a citizen advisory committee right now now they are a pretty um, excited and loyal group. They've been with the project for about five years. What kind of people are on it? We have a variety of property and business interests and then uh, a, a lot of different interests on both sides of the bridge. So too. it's a good cross-section. It is a good cross-section of different neighborhood representatives, different business interests, not only around the Burnside Bridgehead site, but also in the Central East side. We also have an Urban Renewal Advisory Committee, which, which guides us and provides assistance to PDC in regards to how we um, focus our efforts in the, in the Central East side. And then, of course, there are other other opportunities in terms of public outreach and public workshops. So I would encourage anyone who is interested to go to our website, take a look at the opportunities we have and, and, and submit an application. So taking a step back from some of the particular projects, what does PDC and the city want to see accomplished in the Central East Side as, as a whole? How does it fit into the greater economic development strategy for the city? So the Central East Side, again, with 17,000 existing jobs and, and the potential for a, a significant amount of growth, our focus is on jobs. 
the economic development strategy stresses that and with the Central East Side we have a great opportunity to, to, to create jobs and to uh, provide services that support those jobs as well. Not, that's not to um, to not say that we can, we also have a focus on commercial and residential. With the east side streetcar coming into the central east side, there's incredible opportunities for a lot of storefront improvements and um, upgrades along MLK and Grand that, that could really benefit businesses who, who are either along the line or adjacent to a streetcar stop. So, so we are definitely look, looking for opportunities to, to do outreach with those uh, uh, to do outreach with those business owners and to, to help them uh, improve their businesses, their storefronts, and their operations to take advantage of the streetcar. So, Geraldine, in addition to the specifics of the Burnside Bridgehead project, there's a lot going on in the central east side that can spur jobs and economic development. Tell us about some of the things that are happening. Great. Well, um, as you said, the, the Burnside Bridgehead site is only four acres of a, of a pretty large central yeah. east side urban renewal area, and there's a lot going on all over the place. Down in the south end of the central east side, we have the Portland and Milwaukee light rail alignment sure. coming through um, in between OMSI and uh, the Portland Opera. So that's a great area that we've started to look at in terms of how to take advantage and leverage yeah. the, the uh, OMSI Street Station and the Clinton Street Station for light rail and the opportunities that has not only for the existing businesses but also for new businesses down in the south end. When will light rail start? So light rail starts construction in 2012 and it will be operational in 2015. And what it will really do for the central east side it, is it will link it to South Waterfront and PSU as right. part that's part of the innovation quadrant where we're tying academic workforce and uh, private sector development as a way to, to team everyone together and take advantage of everyone's strengths um, to, to build on, on uh, technology and research and development as it relates to not only the target clusters but also high, high growth companies. So what else besides light rail? I know there's a lot of other things going on too. Streetcar, other things? Streetcar, streetcar, it will be operational in um, 2011. So uh, that's under construction right now. The Burnside Cooch couplet will be complete uh, at the end of this year. Both of those transportation transit improvements open up a lot of opportunity for the central east side businesses in terms of more, more drive-by traffic, but then also more transit opportunities with the streetcar. There'll be stops every few blocks or so along MLK and Grand, which will provide those businesses with a lot of opportunities. We're also looking at a strategic plan for the rest of the life of the Central East Side District. Um, it's about to close out in 2016, so how do we take advantage of, of the dollars we do have and where do we focus our, our efforts? A lot of that, again, will be focused along the streetcar alignment, but we are exploring other opportunities in terms of creating more of an 18-7 type environment for the Central East Side that could include a night market that takes advantage of, of space under the Morrison Bridge and provides opportunities for a lot of different businesses. It, it could include uh, assistance with rehabbing existing warehouses that are in the area and then also teaming with PBOT and our other partners at Parks and whatnot in terms of uh, parking strategy for the district as well. So parking sure. is very important. And PDC sees the Central East Side as job central and an opportunity for creating jobs. Tell us a little bit about some of the job strategies we're doing. So. Uh, a fascinating thing about the Central East Side is that it actually has a significant amount of jobs in all of the target industry clusters that we focus on. And so that's activeware that's right. and design, software, ma advanced manufacturing, and clean tech and sustainability. We have done an inventory of every single business in the Central East Side over the past few months. And we, we were pleasantly surprised to find a lot of industry in each of those clusters. Geraldine, thanks so much for sharing these exciting plans with us. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with Geraldine and Brad Malson from Beam Development to talk about the Burnside Bridgehead Project in particular. <music> In just a moment, we'll be hearing from Geraldine about an exciting project called the Burnside Bridgehead. Now, you might ask, what is the Burnside Bridgehead project? Well, we asked PDC videographer John Cardenas to go out and ask the public what they thought. Here's what he found.
not very much. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. So, uh, it's an area. Uh, nothing. I don't live in this part of town. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. No. Sometimes it takes a month or two. Restaurants, clothiers. I'd like to see bike lanes on each side. Something good to have there, you know, for kids and public events and things like that. Something that will actually revitalize and assist the community. Definitely sustainable housing would be nice, slash business, right? So I want to see a bicycle friendly green space. A soup kitchen. Library. A nice park or somewhere with some food. I think we've got enough. Condos. A parking lot. Anything that's not like a, a gym or a Starbucks. I don't want to see a bunch more pavement. No corporate development here would be cool, but you know, we respect the trickle down of that as well. Oh, uh, I'm not so much of an not like kind of guy. Geraldine also works in South Waterfront, where PDC has recently set national records for diversity in our construction workforce. Here's one woman's story about how participating in South Waterfront construction has changed her life and that of her families. Every day I learn something different. The journeymen I work with are great. And I like Paul, he's been doing it for 40 years. So, you know, I just check out what he's doing and how he does it with such ease. You know, like when you first start, you're really trying to scramble. And, you know, these guys are like cool and calm. And, you know, they don't seem like they're working very hard and you're trying to keep up with them. But that's, that's good because it teaches you and it keeps you motivated and, and driven to do your best. And, be a part of the family out here. In the next 10 to 15 years, a, a lot of the construction workforce is going to retire. And so I think it's really important that um, everybody in the city, especially women and people of color, have opportunities for these career family wage jobs. That's one of the things that's important about the uh, Portland Apprenticeship Agreement is in the South Waterfront. We could see there's going to be many structures for years to come. It's so important to have these ongoing opportunities for apprentices to continue to work and to journey out. Apprenticeships last anywhere from two to five years, so you have to have multiple opportunities over time. And for folks that aren't going to college or don't have the financial resources to go to college, apprenticeship is a really important, viable alternative. It provides significant opportunities for young people, and especially women and people of color, to enter apprenticeships. It is like another language. They'll ask you to get something, and you're like, what is that? <laughs> what does it look like? And the book work, we have a big book. <laughs> it is, it's challenging. Um, I think for me, the best part is the hands-on. I was on the deck crew before and, and wall crew. I kind of went back and forth. Then I'm here, I'm doing more of the curbs and the handset walls, which I never had an opportunity to do. And you literally uh, earn while you learn out on the job site. Uh, it's family wage jobs. All the workers are provided with uh, health insurance and, and pension benefits. Uh, it's not just a job, it's, it's all about a career. PDC was an important um, participant and driver in this agreement. Uh, they came to the table early, they were one of the first ones, 
and uh, were very, very helpful. All the parties that have been involved in this uh, effort have really come to the table and worked hard. Uh, we've met most of our goals, not all of them, but we're working hard to achieve them. And I think one thing that's important to think about is that a lot of folks learn about these opportunities from their peers. So as more women and people of color are successful at these jobs, they'll tell their friends and they in turn will hopefully turn around and apply for these good opportunities in apprenticeship. I'd have to say do it. Give it a try. <laughs> I mean, I was really timid about doing it just because of my personality. I'm kind of quiet, shy, and I'm a smaller woman. And so I thought when I got out here, all these big buff guys, I was like, I'm not going to be able to do it. I've, I've never been on a job with this many women. My last job, there was just one other woman, and she was a laborer. I'm usually the only woman. Yeah. So when I got here, I was like, whoa. <laughs> you know, I didn't, yeah, I didn't expect all this, you know, but it's, it's great, you know. They don't treat you like you're just another hand that can be replaced. They take a personal interest in you, not just get the job done. Is it hard work physically? A little. I think it is PDC's role to let the community know how successful this has been and of the opportunities that are on the site. It's, it's all worth it when you drive by the buildings and you take your children or family and say, I was a part of that and look what I did and I bring my kids down there. So often, you know, they kind of watch the buildings progress and it's good for the kids to see mommy working hard. They love it. You know, they, they brag about me and I love it to hear them do that, you know, and oh, bless you. <laughs> you can do it. A lot of women think, I'm not going to be able to do it, you know, um, but you can. You just have to be motivated. And we're back again with our two guests today, uh, Geraldine Moyle, a senior project manager at the Portland Development Commission, and Brad Malson, the owner of Beam Development. Brad has a great story about how he switched careers from being a physician and went into real estate development. Brad, give us a, a little bit about your background and how you came to this project. Well, originally I'm from New York, and um, I was an optometric vision rehabilitation specialist. and. Um, I grew up in the projects in Brooklyn and kind of gotten a, an interest in how neighborhoods and how districts and communities develop. And um, as I started to uh, make some money as a, uh, as a physician in Manhattan, um, I was always interested in the built environment and started to invest in historic buildings and um, look at opportunities to redevelop um, interesting and kind of eclectic neighborhoods in, in New York, Soho, Tribeca, um, South uh, Village, East Village, and um, in, in an interesting way, I, I, I started to develop a, a sense of development, and um, it, was a, it was a great time. And um, about 15, 16 years ago, uh, my wife and I and my three kids decided to pack our bags up and move to Portland, Oregon, for an opportunity to be more a part of a city um, and it's been a great ride, and we've um, had some great opportunities. Brad, that's a great story, and what kind of experience to bring to a project like this. So here we are. Uh, we're in the Central East Side. We're talking about the Burnside Bridgehead Project. Geraldine, Brad, both of you have been involved in this project for a long time. Uh, it's reaching a point where everyone's excited about it moving forward. Uh, what is the project? Where is it going, and what can people expect to see in the future? Well, um, for those who aren't familiar, it's a four acre site, four city blocks at the northeast corner of MLK and the Burnside Bridge. And um, it's a site that the city has looked at for quite a while as a site that um, is important not only for uh, redevelopment in terms of mixed use opportunities, but also for the creation of jobs. It's really ideal as part of the central city uh, to be a site that um, could harbor a significant amount of, of employment opportunities. So since jobs is a top priority for PDC in the city, given the economic climate that we're in, what kind of jobs do you two think that could be uh, brought here? Uh, we know there's construction jobs whenever you build something, but in terms of the long term, what kind of economic activity would you be looking at? We've had an opportunity to um, have done uh, uh, somewhere between a half a million and a million square feet in the central east side. And uh, interesting 
part about that is that um, the creative community, the creative cluster of businesses, as Geraldine was talking about, um, have, have migrated towards our buildings. And they're not the typical office buildings. They, they kind of don't feel comfortable in a typical Class A or Class B office. These are creative, flex space, smart space, whatever you might, smart flex. We, we're trying to work on branding and a definition and, um, and uh, a, a, an ability to describe exactly what we have created. We're sitting right now in the Olympic Mills Commerce Center, which was a former um, flour mill, and uh, gross uh, square footage of 172,000 square feet. And today it's full, and um, we have over 100 businesses and close to 500 jobs in this, in this building. So this is part of the, the economic development strategy I think that PDC is working towards in creating, in securing this creative group of businesses um, and creating jobs. And we believe we can take this kind of momentum in this uh, small business cluster and move it into the bridgehead and make it part of the focus. And Brad, your company, Beam Developments, had a lot of success over the years. What kind of projects have you done in the past and what have you learned from those that you can apply to this particular one? I think, part, first of all, um, you know, from uh, the sustainability standpoint, um, there's a lot here. There is a, a level of sustainability that is important to note in saving old buildings and, and, and preserving them in the historic inventory of buildings in the city of uh, Portland or any city. Um, and I think that uh, um, we've been able to repurpose these buildings and uh, make them into affordable workspaces. And we call that in our, in, in our framework plan for the bridgehead, attainable. Mm -hmm. um, because we don't want to just build something that's incredibly expensive and it's similar to the class A and class B office space that's on the west side. Brad, I noticed that in this building alone, there's a rich array of jobs. There's retail, there's commercial, there's artistic, there's creative. Is that the kind of thing that you're looking for the Burnside Bridgehead to do as well? Um, Portland is a small business type of city and uh, a local business kind of community. And we wanted to create a, a district um, that really caters to those kinds of businesses um, and employment opportunities. Um, and as we've talked about in the Olympic Mills and the Water Avenue Commerce Center and East Bank Commerce Center, we've been able to do that with some of these older buildings, which we plan to do at the um, Burnside Bridgehead in the Convention Plaza, potentially, as one of the potential outcomes. But more, as important as that is, we, we feel it's really important to be able to build new construction that also mi uh, mirrors the kind of uh, affordability, sustainability, and attainability that we have been able to do in the uh, historic rehabs of the existing buildings. It seems to me that it all boils down to one word, and that's opportunity. So what is the opportunity for the Burnside Bridgehead site? The, uh, the opportunity for the Burnside Bridgehead site is the fact that there are these an incredible um, number of creative individuals coming to Portland, or either here or coming here, that want to start businesses, want to grow businesses, want an area where they can collaborate. And uh, we believe that uh, the, the Burnside Bridgehead can be that catalyst or that prototype that shows the opportunities for small business and, and, and medium-sized business uh, incubation and, and creativity that allows uh, an incredible amount of flexibility. Different than other districts and other areas that um, have already been done. So. And Geraldine, there's also potential development opportunities here too. Tell us a little bit about those. So the site is four acres in size, which is a pretty significant yeah. amount of uh, the Central East Side and also the Central City. It's a large site for the Central City. And through our partnership with BEAM, they have an opportunity to develop a portion of the site, certainly more if um, it's able. But part of what we're looking to do with the site is to create that flexibility in terms of development opportunities. So there are opportunities for other interests to come in. There's opportunities for a lot of, of a vast assortment of jobs and uh, development interests to take a part of the site. So at the end of the day, Brad, if everything worked out perfectly, say two, three, four, five years from now, what would the Burnside Bridgehead look like in five years? Um, the Burnside Bridgehead would look like an eclectic group of buildings, new construction, historic rehab, rehab of the Convention Plaza building, and it would be this, this beehive activity with uh, new businesses, creative businesses, um, 
and jobs and some retail and some live work opportunities. We'd really like it to kind of typify the east side way of doing things, different than the than the west side, complementary to the west side. Um, but we really want it to be a community-based uh, enterprise that brands and creates the opportunity for the rest of the central east side. Well, it sounds like a great challenge. I think everyone's ready to roll up their sleeves and get to work. Geraldine, Brad, we really appreciate your being on the show. I think it's going to help the public understand where we're going and what we're trying to do. Thank you very much. And that's our show. I'd like to thank Geraldine Moyle for talking about PDC's job creation and economic redevelopment efforts in the Central East Side. And special thanks to Brad Melson from Beam Development, who's helping us lead the Burnside Bridgehead Project. I'd also like to thank the North Portland Media Training Center and the Scanner Foundation for producing the show. I'm John Jackley. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.